Hey, it's Ozzy here, continuing with the XMind 8 tutorials video series. And in this module, I'm going to be covering the interface. So I'm going to give you a brief walk through the interface just so that you can see very basically what you can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new mind map because I don't want to spoil this one. OK, so you can open up a new mind map very quickly by using short keys on a Mac. You hold down CMD and then you click N for November. And on Windows, you hold down the control key and you click N for November. You can also go to file in the menu and click on new and that will get you to the same screen. So this is what happens when you open up a new mind map. You have a load of different templates, which are really cool. You have your classic map, organization chart, logic charts. Further down here, you have fish bones, matrix, and we'll be covering those in a bit. Now you also have some ready-made templates. If you click on this button and you'll see those here. And some of these are quite cool actually. And you can scroll down and there's quite a few actually. And I would say that if you're going to create a presentation in XMind or you're going to be selling to a client, then do have a look through these templates because it does make your mind map a lot prettier. But also looking through these templates will give you other ideas for different uses for mind mapping. For example, you have an annual report here. You have a balance sheet. You have a business plan. You have a business timeline, a company hierarchy meeting management and so on. Now, to be fair, some of these things I would use Excel for. I don't use mind mapping for everything, but I do use it for a ton of things. OK, so I'm going to go back to blank and I'm going to show you the template that I always start with. And it is the logic chart, the right aligned one. And there are different styles here for that one template, but I just use the default, which is this. OK, so the first thing that happens on your new mind map is that you have a central topic and everything is going to branch out from that central topic. You can double click this and actually change the title. So my new map that will do us. And then you can very quickly create a mind map. If you right click on the bubble, you'll see that you have a contextual menu and from there you can create topics and subtopics and so on. But I just use the hotkeys because they get you moving very, very quickly. And all I do to start my mind map, in fact, I use this throughout my entire mind map, is I just hit the tab key and that's what happens. A new branch appears. How cool is that? And if you hit the tab key again, then a sub branch branches out from that main topic one that you see on the screen. Now, if you hit the tab key again, you can imagine what's going to happen. That subtopic one is going to sprout another branch of its own. There you see. Now, if you hit enter, what's going to happen is you're going to clone that subtopic. You're not really cloning it. You're actually creating a new one, but it's still within that subtopic one. OK, so if I take a back step to the main topic, and I hit enter, what's going to happen is that a new main topic bubble is going to appear and that is a branch of the same parent of main topic one. So the only two keys to think about are the tab key and the enter key. So let me just backspace and backspace to delete everything. And by the way, as you've just seen, let me just do control and Z to undo. If you delete main topic one, it's going to take with it all the subtopics that are branching out of main topic one. OK, so if I delete that subtopic one, for example, it will take out those two branches, subtopic one and subtopic two, but it will leave main topic one. OK, so let me backspace that. Um, let's say that you wanted to have four different modules in your mind map. Then all I would do is hit tab, enter, enter, enter. That's it. Look how quickly I was able to create that. And if each topic had three subjects or three subtopics, I would do tab, enter, enter, then navigate down, tab, enter, enter, and you get the idea. And in order to change the wording, I just navigated up to main topic one. While main topic one is selected, 
I can type anything and then just press enter and that's the new name of that bubble. I can go down to main topic 2, do the same and hit enter and that's the new name for that bubble. Okay, so this in essence is how you use mind mapping software and what you use it for, okay? So now we're going to explore the right hand side menu here and these are the things that you can do within your mind map. You'll see if you click on this that you have an outline and this gives you a visual tree of all your topics and subtopics. You can click on this to get a different view and you know what? I never ever use this. <laughs> so I'm going to click that off. If you click on the brush, you'll see that you have a lot of formatting tools here. You can change everything from the text to the colors. You'll notice that all the colors have this blue hue. You could change that to red, for example. And in this case, I had the text selected on what used to be main topic two. And you can see that that's turned to red. You can also change the shape and border of your bubbles. So for example, I could change this to an ellipse and I could change the border from thin to fat. Okay. And that's how that looks. You can also change the lines. You can see that at the moment we've got an elbow here. You can make them straight. Can you see how those have changed? You really have a lot of flexibility here and you can change almost anything. Okay, so I'm going to click that off and I'm going to click on the next icon. Now this is a pro feature which enables you to insert clip art and also has an icon finder. So we won't be using that because that's for the pro people. And next we have the markers, which you've already seen. Now these are really cool. And all you do here is you click the bubble or the branch or the sub branch where you want to insert the marker and you just click the marker that you want. I call them icons. Apparently the right name is markers. And I also call these branches and apparently they're called topics. But hey, that's our role. Okay, so you can see also that if you're going to have a mind map that you're going to use to teach or to sell, you could really prettify it with a lot of these icons. And even if you're using it for yourself and you're mind mapping your business or maybe you're outlining a marketing plan, then you can do this kind of thing and add names there. So that could be Adam and that could be Mildred. And you can play around. If I put a phone in there, then I can pretend that that's my support department for project management and for planning anything with dates. These month icons are going to come in handy. Uh, also, you have days of the week, which can be quite handy. If I just give you an example here, actually, let's let's do Sunday. Let's go down here. Monday. Tuesday. I'm sorry that you're having to watch this. <laughs> okay, so let's do Thursday. Let's just go as far as Friday. Eh? Okay. Now you'll see a minus and a plus round icon at the bottom right of your mind map. And this is handy if you have a large mind map because you can zoom in on one specific section and work on that. And of course, if you're creating a video presentation, then XMind is an excellent tool to help you do that. So you could use that to zoom in onto certain topics just so your audience is more clear on what's going on. Okay, so the next icon you see here is the themes icon. And these are different styles for your actual mind maps. You can play around with these. Just double click the style that you want and you'll see this pop up here that says override. So I'm going to click on override. And if I just make that mind map a bit smaller, then you can see how the entire style has changed. Okay, then we're going to go to the next icon on the right hand side. And you have this be the first to add a note. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this subtopic one up here and I'm going to write a little note. Now, when I click back on the screen away from the note, what you see here is a yellow icon that tells you there's a note. And if you hover your cursor over it, you'll see the contents of the note appear. And you can see how handy these notes can be if you're using a large mind map. For example, if this branch was a wish list for tools that you want to purchase, then you could name the tool here and create a note with the URL to that tool. Okay, so I'm going to click on the next icon 
and you'll see that you have a insert a comment. So I'm going to select a different subtopic and I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to type in a comment and I'm going to save it and you'll see that I have a comment there. And this comes into its own if you're working with a team, if you're using the pro version, for example, and you're able to share your mind maps with other people because they can all comment on one thing and it keeps all that information in one mind map. Very, very cool stuff. And the last icon is another pro feature. And this is simply a call to action to upgrade to pro, which we're not going to be doing because we're using XMind 8 for free. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. And in the next module, we're going to be talking about structures, what they are, why you need them and all that good stuff. So I'll see you over in that module.